all right, gonna give you my testimony. So I grew up going to NIV churches, churches that use the NIV uh, Bible, more like an NIV Bible perversion, but uh, there was never really any hard preaching against sin. I never had any conviction of my sin. It was mostly just NIV, like, it was NIV type stuff. It was like, you know, God loves you, you know, God's not angry at you, God's not, you know, sin is bad, but God's not, you know, gonna judge people and that kind of stuff. I never heard anything about judgment, never, barely heard any preaching on hell. You know, I heard all kinds of misconceptions about hell, everything like that. So there was never any real hard preaching, any never any conviction over my sins. And uh, I grew up uh, like that for about, uh, I don't know, for like 10 years maybe. Then when I was in 8th grade, when I was 13 years old, 14 years old, I was kind of getting into Nazism and getting into atheism and that kind of stuff. Mostly as a result of me not hearing any hard preaching against uh, sin. And when I was in grade, it was kind of grade seven ish, grade eight ish. When I was grade seven ish was when I was starting to get into atheism, and grade eight when I was was when I was starting it to get into Nazism. And uh, basically, I was into I was like really into Nazism and atheism. I denied God. I even would would have my Bible. I'd throw it around and that kind of stuff and say this isn't real. God is you know not real. But here's the thing: when I was an atheist, really deep down inside, I really did want to believe there is a God. And uh, I was like that till I was about in grade nine. When I was in grade nine, I I turned away from atheism, and uh, it was about I was 15 years old. I turned away from atheism, and I was a false convert. I thought I got saved, but I was duped by the uh, false gospel of easy believism taught by heretics like Stephen Anderson, and he was he was kind of the one I got sucked into, and I was uh, for for a long time I thought I was a false convert. I uh, renounced atheism when I thought I got saved, but really I was told just believe. There's no repentance, there's no uh, remorse for your sins, there's no there's no coming to the end of your self-righteousness. And for some of these people, they even say, you don't even have to call upon God, it's just believe. So I was a false convert. When I was in grade nine over the summer holidays, I was uh, wanting to do work for God. I had a zeal, but it was a zeal not according to knowledge. I had a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, like the, the Bible says. So. Uh, that was about for, I was in grade 9, grade 10, then uh, grade 11, I came across a preacher named Brian Dellinger. And I, uh, I thought, oh, he's a heretic, because Anderson would denounce him as a heretic. I thought, oh, he's just a heretic, he's just a wingnut on YouTube. So I just kind of dismissed him. I even made some videos attacking him. Well, I, mean, I made many videos attacking him. But then, after the December holidays, I began to doubt my what I thought I had was salvation. So I thought... Oh, maybe just because I'm listening to Brian Dillinger, maybe that's why I'm doubting my salvation. So I stopped listening to Brian Dillinger. Then when I was in grade 12, uh, when I started grade 12, because I do go to public schools, uh, sadly, my parents are not, not they're, just, they're just not able to homeschool me. But uh, when I got into grade 12, I, I began, I joined the uh, Ed Fenninger, you know, no calling upon God, no repentance cult. And I was just making video after video after video attacking Brian. And again, I, this whole time I thought I was saved, but I was a false convert. And I was just obsessively attacking someone who I thought was lost. And um, that whole time, uh, again, I was a false convert. So I, I thought I was saved, but I never really had any assurance of my salvation. I never had any conviction over my sin. I was just told, just believe and you know, all, all kind of you know, stuff. There's no calling upon God. There's no coming to the end of your self-righteousness and admitting you're a sinner before God. It's just... You know, believe you believe you're saved, and you're saved. You know, it's it's it's, it's I, I I like to call it the gospel of Sodom because this is exactly what Sodomites teach. They teach you have to just believe. You know, that's all it is, just believe, and you can keep being a Sodomite and and have no remorse for that. But uh, in November, I left the Ed Fenninger right cult. I was still a false convert, but I left the Ed Fenninger cult, and uh, I was following Brian. But then. Uh, I was still following, and I was still, you know, there were times where I'd emulate Brian, so I was still living in some sin, and I never had any conviction over that. Then in January, I got rebuked publicly, and, and very strongly too, and that eventually lead, led me to come to the end of my self-righteousness, and repent and come to God as a sinner, which is repentance, and I called upon God, I said, God, please save me, be merciful to me, a sinner, and I put my faith in Jesus Christ, his death, and resurrection on the cross. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the gospel. But uh, it wasn't until I got strongly rebuked, which never happened to me before, that I came to the end of my self-righteousness and came to the end of my pride and realized, yeah, I was false this whole time. Because one of the things that kept me from getting saved was just me, me just not wanting to admit I was false the whole time. So in January, I got, I got truly saved. I, I got truly born again. 
and was no longer a false convert. And ever since then, I've had assurance of my salvation. Well, not my salvation, it's God that saved me. And, you know, all, all glory goes to Him. But I've had assurance, and uh, I've, I've really had great fellowship with the other brethren, and uh, it's been great. I mean, it's it's really good fellowship. I mean, the fellowship, the spirit's really strong. It's it just you really feel you just you just feel. I mean, ever since I got truly born again, I just really have felt a lot different. And obviously, you know, the change of your life is not going to happen overnight. It, it, it takes a, it's a process, but I just really felt different. I really you know the hymn says what you know I think I forget how the hymn goes, but I think it's like it's like what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. That that happened to me. You know, a big change happened in my life. And uh, I've been trying to witness to some of my family members who are lost, and since I mean some success, some not success, you know, or no success. But uh, yeah, all this started when I went to NIV churches, then I got into atheism, and then was a false convert. And then in January, when I was 18 years old, that's when I truly got saved, truly got born again, and left. Uh, was no longer a false convert. So that's my testimony. Uh, and if you're wondering what salvation is, I'm I'm, I'm planning on coming up with a salvation video. Uh, salvation is you come to the end of yourself and you realize that you're no good, you're a sinner, you're a dirty, rotten, you know, filthy dog, like, as Jesus said in the, in the book of Matthew. And you come to the end of yourself and you come to God as a sinner. And of course, you put your faith in Jesus Christ and you repent, which is what will happen when you come to God as a sinner, and you call upon the name of the Lord. You can see Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 13 on that. So that's salvation and that's my testimony. So uh, thank you for watching. God bless you. Goodbye.